Welcome to Camelsville Baptist Church. I'm Brad Lauer, Discipleship Pastor. It's my honor to be with you today. We are on week number four, or session number four of a study called Do Something about what God wants to do in our lives and then through our lives as we look at our community and those around us who need to be uh, t have the touch of God in their lives. Um, we've looked at five, we're looking at five different words through that. The first one was preparation. We must be prepared and prepare ourselves. The second one was purpose. Um, as we look at those areas in our lives that give us purpose. And the purpose was to be in line with God's Word. And today we're going to be looking at pain, about different pain and um, pain in our lives that sometimes we go through, but also we can minister through as we um, do things for Christ. Uh, so I hope that you have your Bibles. We're going to be all over today again, but um, we're going to start with Luke chapter 23. And so that's where we're going to begin. And so I hope that you have your Bibles, something to write with if you want to take notes, um, that you will just um, engage in God's Word as we study God's Word together today. So let's, let's pray and then we will jump right in. God, we thank you for today, a time we have the opportunity to uh, look into your Word, to study your Word so that we get to know you a little bit better that we get to understand your pur the purpose you have for us, but also the plan you have for us, um, and God, and how you help us deal with different situations in our lives. And so may we be true to you as we look at your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Think about it for a moment, the different areas of pain that we have in our lives or in lives in our community today. You know, is it the, the pain of feeling inadequate or um, death or sickness? Is there pain within our families, um, drugs, different things that are going on? Could be loss of job, could be um, um, stress somewhere in our lives, could be physical ailments, uh, could be stress and pain over a child or a loved one. So many different things, the different pains we have and struggles we have in our lives and in our community today. You know, one of the biggest pains in our community today is, is the drug epidemic that is going on. And so we, uh, there has to be ways um, to deal with that. Think about this. When you get stressed, when you get angry, when you get on that bad side of yourself, let's just say, what are some of the common reactions that you have when you don't get your way or things aren't going your way when you're in those states? For me, I get a little short. I have a little shorter temper, a little shorter fuse. Uh, my words are a little sharper. They bite just a little more. Um, I don't have a lot of soft edges anyway, but um, they become even, they cut a little more, they dig a little deeper, they're a little more sarcastic, so I have to be very careful. And some of my reaction is I blame God. Many of us blame God for things that have gone on in our lives or ask God the why question which isn't bad to ask the why question, but we ask God or we blame God for our pain or for somebody else's pain or why this happened to them. So we blame God and say, God, this is your fault. And so today, as we look at what God wants to do in us and through us, we're going to try to look at Jesus's pain and then what that says about us and then what we can do through that for God to do miracles in our lives and through our lives. So Luke chapter 23, this is the whole crucifixion time. I just want to read one verse. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. So here's Jesus, the crucifixion. Under great stress and pain, physical pain, mental pain, spiritual pain, all these kind of things, the feeling of betrayal, the feeling of inadequacy, the feeling of all those things wrapped in one. He had just gone through a trial. He'd been beaten. He'd been spit upon. He'd been, he had all these, this robe put on him while he had been beaten, before he'd been beaten, after he'd been beaten. And then once the blood soaked into the robe and all that, they ripped it off of him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And these aren't just like you see like in a blackberry, blackberry bush. But these were thorns two inches long 
and they set that and stuck it into his head. So he's got blood running down his face. People spit on him. He had to carry this huge beam of a cross through the city streets and stumbled and fell. And it was too heavy for most people to carry even when they weren't, when they hadn't been beaten. He had nails driven through his hands and his feet. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them because they don't really understand who I am. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. You see, our response to pain is directly, directly related to our identity in the eyes of God. What I'm trying to say by that is when we truly understand our identity, when we go through pain and suffering, our response will be more of a God response. Father, forgive them. God, whatever it is, we'll do. God, I know I'm hurting now. I know that I may have a sickness or an illness, but I want you to get the glory. God, protect my children through this or protect my family, but I know that I'm going to go through some things. Our response is directly related to how we feel about who we are in Christ. And we know where our strength comes from and we know where our identity comes from. We know who we are in Christ. We are Christ brother or sister we are God's child and as God's children pain produces righteousness in our lives when we are focused and in a good place and we are in the midst of God and we have spent time in God's word and we understand that he, it, pain will produce righteousness in our lives Hebrews 12 11 says no discipline seems pleasant at the time but painful Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. And so we go through things in our lives sometimes and God teaches us through those things. And on the other side, we can help others understand who God is during those awful times in our lives. And as saints, we are called saints by God. Once we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are a saint. As a saint, we are comforted so we can comfort others. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Grace and peace be to you, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. As saints, we are comforted so we can comfort others. We can, because of grace given, because of things we've gone through, we can then turn that around and help someone else. As conquerors, we can be confident that nothing can snatch us from God's hand. One of my favorite passages of Scripture. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all, th give us all things? Who will bring any charge against, him, against those who God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who, is that then, who then is the one who condemns? No, no one. Christ who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is all that is at the right hand of God also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written? For your sake we will face death all day long. Knowing all these things, we are more conquerors than... Now, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We can't be separated because we are conquerors. Christ is beside us, fighting alongside of us. We can be confident that nothing can take us away from the love of Christ. Once we've been sealed, once we've been accepted Christ, we've been sealed, we've been sealed by the blood of Christ, then we are Christ. We are wrapped around by Him, and nothing can separate us. No matter what that is, no matter what hardship, no matter what person, no matter what situation, no matter what pain, we cannot be separated from God. We need to have confidence in that. And as God's beloved, when we suffer, we share in Christ's glory. Dear friends, in 1 Peter, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. 
but rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. In other words, it's going to all be worth it. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. If we stray true to God, we have to remember our time on earth is limited. It's finite. It's short. It's quick. We may not think 95 years is quick, but in the scheme and the span of eternity, it's barely even a blip. And so we share in Christ's glory. Just because we're persecuted here doesn't mean it will last forever. It may be hard for a moment in time, but it's not forever. The problem is, remember that whole fleshy human side, the side that Satan likes to mess with all the time? We can buy into Satan's lies and, ident and the identity he wants us to have. A failure. We're weak. We're addictive. We're selfish. It's all about me. It's all about this. It's instant gratification. And when we're in that place, and when Satan attacks us in certain ways, it leads to a, a bad place. And in those bad places, we look at pain only in the negative. We say, woe is me. Woe is me. Why is all this happening? We're like Job up there going, why in the world did all this stuff happen to me? I don't deserve this. That's where we go. <clears throat> we just talk about it negatively. We don't understand it. We, don't, um, we only think of the negative. And you've been around people like that. Who all they do is complain. All they do is say, that's not happening. Uh-uh. Why me? Why, why have I lost this? Why am I sick? Why is my family sick? Why, why have I lost a job? Why did my car break down? Why? And we go on and on and on. And we don't look for the, the teaching moment. We don't look for the learning moment. We don't turn back to God. We're just fighting God and complaining about God and blaming God. And we almost always do anything we can do to avoid pain. We run from it. We step aside. We think about other things. We, um, just, we try to cover it up with other things. We're stressed. We're depressed over something. And so instead of dealing with it and talking through it, we take a pain pill. We hit the bottle. We um, endeavor in bad relationships. We, we um, immerse ourselves in different things so that we don't have to deal with the pain. We don't have to deal with the hard times. Instead of hitting them head on and just fighting through it and saying, God, help me through this. It may be hard, but I'm in it for the long haul, and I need you to, to take me through this. Instead, we run from church. We run from people that care. We, we, we take on addictive behaviors. We, we, um, we make bad choices. Um, we go further and further in financial debt because we can't understand how to get out of it. So we just give up all hope and just go keep going down that road. All these things we do because we'll do almost anything to avoid pain. And what goes along with that is we will seek to drown it out with worldly pleasures. Whatever that looks like to you. I mentioned some, whether it's, um, it's, it's a drug or an alcohol is considered a drug. Um, could be pain pills, those kind of things. It could be we just avoid certain situations of people who would love us. Um, a lot of people, when they get down and get bad, in a bad way or in a bad place, they leave the church. And I don't know if they leave because they're blaming God or they, they don't want to be embarrassed by that they're in a bad place. I don't know. But, I, but the more people that surround us that are godly, the, the, the easier it will be to get through things because we will have support and we will have encouragement and we will have love. And all those things help bring peace and healing. There are a couple of things doctors tell you to help people go through hard um, physical issues. One is to have a good support system, good family, good encouragement, not negativity around you all the time, but positive encouragement and love 
realistic things at times to have those hard conversations and to push, but good relationships. And two is to have a faith. Many doctors will tell you that they don't understand how this medical condition changed except that it was a miracle. And we know where miracles come from. So think about it for a moment. How do you respond and react to pain? Different times in my life, I've reacted and responded differently. There have been times that I have blown up, avoided, run away, taken on a different lifestyle, um, abused some things, um, very hateful and hurtful to people. But there have been times when I've embraced it and said, okay, God, what do you want to teach me? God, help me through this so I can help someone else. So there are two ways to look at it. I've done them all. Nobody's perfect. However, I know it's easier when I stay in tune with God. When I read my one experience I had, I don't know, 10 years ago, the first thing I did was I went and bought a Bible study book, and I spent every morning in Scripture even more intently than I had been before. I spent more time in prayer because I didn't understand. I wanted to understand. I wanted to be faithful and say, God, what do you want me to do? Because of the circumstances, situations, I felt like I was being obedient, but it was not an easy choice, not an easy decision. And so God helped me through that time and encouraged me along the way and sent people to me to help me and encourage me and gave me opportunities to minister in a different way than I ever imagined. And so God, I just, so I just want to tell you, you can do it either way. And so we come to the point in this study that, or this lesson that says God wants to do something in you. We've talked about it. We've talked about how we're to do things. But what about in you? What can you do specifically to allow God to work in your life and not just around it and bypass you and not just keep it up in your head, but make it something that you have to do, something you have to be practical about? First thing we need to do, and I've done this in my own life and I still have to do it, we have to identify and confess the selfishness that we have in our pain response. When we blame God, when we lash out at somebody, when we avoid certain people in certain groups, identify and confess the selfishness in your pain response. Second thing, ask God to make you more like Him through your pain. How can you be more gracious? How can you be more compassionate? How can you be, how can you love more? How can you extend more mercy? How can you encourage more during those hard times? And they're not always going to be easy. Visited someone not long ago, uh, another gentleman and I went to go visit this family in their home, and they're homebound, they can't get out, um, health-wise not good. And as we talked, uh, this gentleman and I prayed for this, this man and his wife, but he would not let us out until he prayed for us, which is a very humbling thing to do. You're there to minister. But because he's embraced this identity and who he is and, and all this pain that he's in, in this rough patch, he still continues to encourage and to love and to, and to give mercy and grace and compassion. So what can you do to be more like him through your pain? And then what would be godly ways to respond to stress, anger, and unexpected problems in your life? What would be different? What would be ways to do that? Write them down somewhere. Write them down that I usually do this, so identify what we've done. We talked about that earlier. But what would be a better response in these situations? Write it down. Make a list. Keep it in a journal. Make a little note. Put it in your Bible. Whatever it takes. Because sometimes if we don't think through those, our natural reaction is what we typically do in pain is a negativity Type a negative type response. So what we can do that would be more godly? It's not something that will happen overnight, more than likely it can, but sometimes it's a learned process and a growing process to do things differently. And, and, as, and, that, and so God wants to do something in you, 
so that He can then do something through you as you look out into this community, as you look out into the world, as you look out in your neighborhood, or if, at the grocery store, or at the restaurant, or at the hardware store, or um, at whatever boutique, or whatever car lot, wherever you go. He wants to do something through you. We have to know God has faithfully brought us through painful situations in our lives. We have to know that. We have to embrace that. That God has brought us through those times. And sometimes God doesn't choose to bring us through those. And some people face that every day. But God has given you a day or given you a week or given you more than expected. And to, He's bringing you through that because there's a purpose behind it. There's a reason why. There's something for you to do. And you need to think about this. God's comfort was not meant to be your... God's comfort was not meant for only your benefit. Other people are watching. Other people are observing. Other people are surrounding you. And however you and I respond to the pain we go through, it affects the people like, a, like when you throw a rock in the middle of a lake and the ripple effect. The ripple effect of us handling pain in a godly way sends ripples through all those that we come in contact with so that they will be changed as well. And they may start responding and reacting differently. I was visiting um, in the hospital the other day and um, ran across somebody from a local business. I stopped in the hallway and conversed with them and said, hey, who you out here to see? And he told me one of their employees had had surgery. And I said, well, good. What room's he in? I want to go see him. You know, and I did. And he went on and um, he texted me later that day and he said, um, I really appreciate seeing you in the hallway. I know that you're busy. And I'm like, well, that's what, you know, part of what we do. What, what I've been called to do is go visit. And he said, but um, you're out there and then you made a, an attempt, an, an exception to go see someone not in your church family, but somebody else, this employee of theirs, who I know. Um, he goes, so it inspired me to go visit someone I hadn't seen in a while. And I, I just thought, the ripple effect, not that I'm the perfect person because I'm not very good, but the fact that when we do something and it causes a ripple effect and we can help others through pain. God wants to share with them the comfort He has given you. Let me read 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 3 and 4. Praise be to God, the, the God, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The faith of compassion, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. God wants you to share with them the comfort He has given you. As we talk about the God moments in our lives, it helps others see the God moments in their lives. I'm a firm believer that. We talk about what excites us and what we truly love. And so we will talk about our kids and we will talk about our spouses and we will talk about our grandkids and we will talk about great grandkids. We will talk about sports or work or, but how much do we talk about God and the miracles that God has performed around us, the things God has done in our lives? How often do we share about the God moments in our lives? People say, well, Brad, it's, that's a private thing, is it? There's no plan B in telling others about Jesus. It's not somebody else's job, it's ours. As a Christian, it's our responsibility because we ought to be excited about whatever. We want to share people what excites us. Okay? And so if we do that, We will tell others more often about who Christ is and we will start seeing the more miracles around us. And we have to understand this last thing that God wants to do through us. Pain does not have to only hurt. Because it can motivate, it can help bring comfort, it can help bring grace, and it can help bring love, and it can help bring patience and peace. So as you go through the rest of your week, here's a practical thing you can do this week. As you've you know, we've talked about 
looking inwardly and kind of taking inventory of how I respond in negative in bad situations um, and understand that we we want to be more like him and we can kind of make a list of ways to respond differently and how we can help others through their pain so to help us to do something about it and not just to sit and close our Bible and turn the TV off and let that be it for the week Identify someone who's suffering and write them a note, give them a call or text, or go visit them during this time and give them encouragement. It's not hard. One or two people, go and visit. We all have a few moments to do that. Or make a phone call or write a handwritten note. Those are ways we communicate. Those are ways we share, show we care. You don't have to go to the extent of sitting in the hospital with them for four days or whatever that looks like. But a note, a few words, a few moments of your time, anything will help. So do something this week by helping someone and encouraging someone through a time of pain in their lives. I can give you examples of people in these last few weeks that have just gone out of their way to love people because they wanted to help them through a time of pain. And God was using them to help them through a time of pain and loss, whether they were um, whatever. God, we, we thank you for today. And God, I know that there are a lot of people who are going through hard times. Physical pain, emotional pain, mental pain. financial pain, and etc. And so, God, I hope and pray that the people going through those will reach out to you only and not to some other method. By reaching out to you, you will send them the right people and the right methods and the right way to handle whatever they're going through. But um, So it's not a casting off of responsibility, but it's a starting point. It's a start with you not in the in the last ditch effort do we come to you but in the very beginning we come to you and God as we go throughout the rest of our week may we identify a person or two and just love them encourage them write them a note call them whatever it takes to just give them a little bit of encouragement and show them that you love them as well may we do that this week and God as we um, close our time may it be a time that we have Falling deeper in love with you to live more as you have called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. So do something this week. We dealt with pain this week. Next time we're going to be looking at power. Um, and so I hope that you will join us. If you're able to join us in person, we'd love to have you come be a part of our worship services at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning. And then we do Bible study at 1030. And we have a place for you. Uh, if you're unable, please tune in each and every week here uh, for the time we do Bible study, but also a time of worship that will show on air on TV as well because we want to do this as a gift to you. And again, if you need anything, if you need help, if you need somebody to come visit you, or because we may not know that you, you're, you're where you are, and so just call us at the church, 270-465-8115, or you can email me at bradl at sevobaptist.com. May God continue to guide you on your journey.